use a new double block length hash function uh, based on block ciphers named MJH and uh, analyzes security. Uh, actually, this is the work that I presented at uh, CTRSA workshop uh, this February, and this is the joint work with Martin Stan. Uh, so first, I'm going to give a brief introduction to hash functions and discuss how to construct hash functions using block ciphers and then introduce a new double block length hash function, MJH. And I'm going to give a brief sketch of security proof and then make conclusion. Uh, so hash function is a, an algorithm that takes as a takes as input a message of arbitrary length and then outputs a string of fixed length called a hash value or a message digest. And most cryptographic primitives such as block ciphers use secret information. However, uh, this hash function uh, does not use any secret parameter. It is a fixed publicly known uh, function. It is one of the most widely uh, used cryptographic primitives whose applications include uh, digital signature, password protection, key derivation, and well-known examples of hash functions include uh, SHA hash functions, MGH functions, and HAS160. And basically HAS160 is the current Korean standard hash function. And now I'm going to uh, uh, give certain some security notions that uh, secure hash functions have to satisfy, namely pre-image resistance, second pre-image resistance, and collision resistance. Uh, first, pre-image resistance of a hash function means that uh, for a given hash value, uh, it is harder to find a corresponding message. So it is harder to find the pre-image of a given message. And the second, primitive resistance means for a given message, it is harder to uh, find another message uh, which collides, whose message digest is the same as the previous one. And collision resistance means it is harder to find any pair of two distinct messages uh, with the same hash value. And in this talk, I'm going to focus on this, notion, this security notion since uh, in many, uh, usually this notion is uh, regarded as the most strong security notion, strongest security notion. Uh, now I'm going to discuss how to construct hash functions. The most popular and standard way to construct a hash function uh, is first to, to construct a fixed size compression function that takes as input only a fixed uh, bit string of fixed length and then apply uh, to a long message iteratively. So in, as seen in this figure, a long message is broken down into a number of blocks and each message block goes into uh, this compression function. In this way, initial value is changed to the next uh, training variable and the final training variable is regarded as the defined to be the output of the hash value. So in this way, uh, we can transform a fixed size compression function into a long, into the uh, hash function. And this method is called the Merkle-Denger transform. And one of the, the main advantage of this method is that it preserves the collision resistance of a compression function. So uh, it means we can prove that the uh, entire hash function is collision resistance as long as the, the underlying compression function is collision resistant. So this method allows us to focus only on constructing a secure uh, fixed size compression function. Uh, now, uh, compression functions can be constructed from scratch or be built upon off-the-shelf cryptographic primitives such as block ciphers. And uh, hash functions constructed by the first approach uh, called the dedicated hash functions are showing uh, security, secure, uh, security weaknesses recently. Uh, uh, since uh, Professor Wang 
uh, has made the first successful attack on SHA hash function. Uh, so hash, SHA hash function is the current uh, standard hash function and it has uh, 160 uh, bit output. So ideally, it should provide AP security in terms of collision resistance. However, for now, uh, at least theoretically, one can find the collision on, of the SHA hash function uh, with about 2 to the 60 curl complexity, uh, which might be regarded as practical, uh, since uh, this attack can be executed uh, with a budget of about uh, $300,000 uh, and time of 256 days. Uh, for this reason, uh, many researchers have uh, studied the second approach using block size. Uh, so we begin with uh, begin with uh, we begin with giving the definition of a block cipher. A block cipher uh, consists of uh, encryption algorithm and a decryption algorithm. And encryption algorithm takes as input a plain text and a key of fixed length and outputs the corresponding cipher text of the same length as the plain text. And the decryption algorithm takes as input a cipher text and the key and uh, returns the corresponding plain text. So in this way, uh, each key defines a permutation on the set of NB strings. So actually a block cipher can be seen as a parameterized uh, collection of permutations. And well-known uh, examples of block ciphers include AES, DES, ARIA, SEED. Yeah, ARIA and SEED are Korean standard uh, block ciphers. And AES uh, has three versions. AES uh, according to the key length in use. Uh, and this is a typical structure of a block cipher. Uh, key of a fixed length uh, is extended into a long key schedule. And each round key goes into a round function. In this way, a plain text is changed, it is transformed into the next intermediate variable. In this way, uh, finally, uh, it gives a B string that looks like a random sequence. And as I pointed out in the previous slide, AES has three versions, AES 128, 192, and 256. All the versions uh, operates on 128-bit blocks. However, AES 128 uh, uses 128-bit keys, uh, which means it should provide, it should ideally provide 128-bit security. And it consists of 10 rounds. Uh, on the other hand, AES 256, using 256-bit keys, should have should provide 256 be secured. So it consists of 14 rounds more than AES128. So uh, actually AES256 would be at least 40% slower than AES128. So the, the point of this slide uh, is that uh, uh, 2NB key block cipher is less efficient than NB key block cipher. It is a natural observation. Uh, now, this is a classic uh, construction of a block cipher based compression function called the Davis Mayer scheme. So, here each wire carries n bit information, and by making a single call to the block cipher, uh, we can compress n bit messages. <coughs> and this compression function is fed to the Merkle Dangle transform, producing the entire hash function. Now, uh, these kinds of block cipher based hash functions have two uh, main advantages. Uh, first, uh, by studying, uh, uh, by using uh, uh, extensively studied block cipher, we can easily transfer the trust, the trust in the existing block cipher to the block cipher based hash function. So this means uh, we can prove the entire uh, hash function is secure as long as the underlying block cipher is secure. And the second advantage is that uh, this type of construction is particularly useful in uh, highly constrained 
environments such as RSID systems because a single implementation of a block cipher can be used for both the block cipher and the hash function. Uh, these are also classic constructions and the underlying block cipher uh, might be might use different uh, key size and block size. So we might need some a certain simple function g in order to adjust the uh, input size to the uh, key material. And if the block size and the key size of the block cipher is the same, then we will not need this function. And here we also uh, observe that the output size of this compression function is the same as the block size of the underlying block cipher. And this type of compression functions, or hash functions, are called single block length. And this type of constru constructions uh, can be further generalized uh, by combining all the wires and uh, XOR portions in a simple way. And, to, and there are possible 64 possible constructions, and among which, among them, uh, 12, only 12 are uh, proved or proved to be secure in terms of collision resistance and free energy resistance. These are called uh, PGV constructions, and this, uh, the analysis of these constructions were given uh, about 10 years ago. However, uh, single block lens uh, hash functions or computation functions uh, might be vulnerable to collision attacks due to its short output length. As an example, if we use uh, uh, AS one twenty A, then we can easily uh, uh, find the collision uh, on a, on AS one twenty eight bit on AS one twenty eight uh, based compression function uh, by making about two to the sixty four queries uh, using the birthday attack. So 2 to, the 60, 2 to the 64 carry complexity is quite small from a practical point of view. So this observation motivated a substantial amount of research on the design of uh, double block length hash functions, where the output length is twice the block length of the underlying block cipher. Now, double block length hash functions uh, can be classified into two types according to the key length of the underlying block cipher. First, we look at 200 key block cipher based double block length hash functions. Uh, in this type, of SDM and tandem DM are most classic uh, constructions proposed by Ray and Messi about 20 years ago. However, uh, the collision results of both schemes were proved only recently. Uh, actually, we proved the, uh, the collision resistance of both games uh, last year, especially the second result. Uh, and both games are collision resistant up to both way bound. It's, it, it's optimally secure. And uh, especially the second result will be uh, presented at crypto uh, this summer. And MDK block cipher based double block function. MDC2 is uh, the only construction for MDK block cipher based double block length function that provides provable security, non trivial provable security. It is also um, a very old construction uh, developed by Mayer and Schilling uh, about 20 years ago. And this construction was standardized by ANSI and ISO and was implemented in popular libraries such as OpenSSM. However, the security of this construction also have, has been long time elusive. And only four years ago, uh, the MDC2 uh, was proved to be collision resistant up to 2 to the 5, 2 to the 3 and over 5 query complexity. So here each uh, wire carries n bit 
and this compression function is fed to the Mokodenga transform. So the output size is also uh, 2 NB. So ideally, it should provide NB security, but proof of security guarantees only two, uh, 3 and over 5 bit security, which is far from optimal. However, this is uh, uh, the uh, this is the only non-trivial result currently known. And at this point, uh, our research started uh, by uh, asking this question. So, can we construct an alternative, another double block, a new double block length hash function that provides flexibility to choose the key length of the block cipher and efficiency faster than the existing schemes and also improve security? And the first Actually, we observed that OBSDM and TandemDM uh, supports only 2MB key block ciphers, and MDC2 supports only NB key block cipher. However, uh, if the first pro uh, property is satisfied, then it might be very useful, because some applications might be might need a single double length hash function that supports all the versions of AES, namely AES128. 192 or 256. And as an answer to this question, we have designed a new uh, double block length hash function and named it MJH. So this is the compression function of MJH. This function is fed to the Mokodanga transform. And here, each uh, wire carries n bit, but if uh, this block cipher uh, uses uh, actually this bit information goes into the extra uh, bit of the key material. So we can use any block cipher of the key size. Any uh, we can we can use a, a block cipher of any key length as long as the key length is not less than n the block size. And here sigma is an um, involution. Evolution is a map uh, on the set of NB strings such that involution composed by itself it, uh, produces an identity map. So involution can be simply implemented by a constant, non-zero constant addition. And theta is a constant. Here we identify NB strings into uh, with, the, with the element in the final field of order n2 to the n. So if we choose a sim uh, simple constant theta, then uh, this operation can also be uh, implemented in a simple way. So here we see that this construction uh, provides a flexibility to choose key length. Now we uh, discuss the efficiency of our construction. Uh, if we assume the key size of the underlying block cipher is 2n, then we might compare MJH uh, to a breast DM or a tandem DM. And here we see that with two block cipher cores, we see that two, with two block cipher cores, uh, our construction uh, compresses n bit message block. However, existing schemes such as OBSDM and tandem DM compresses only an n bit message block. So we conclude that our construction is twice faster than the existing scheme. If we assume the underlying uh, block cipher uses n bit key, then we might we can compare MJH to NBC2. And here we also observe that our construction makes two block cipher calls with a single key, while MDC2 uses two distinct keys. And in general, key scheduling takes up about 30% uh, of a single call to the block cipher. So uh, this amount of overload translates into a speed up of about 50%, 15% of MJH over MDC2.
Uh, now, uh, I'm going to give the security proof in the IGS Cypher model. I'm going to uh, give uh, just a sketch of our proof. First of all, our security proof uh, is given in the IGS Cypher model. And in this model, a block cipher is a function uh, such that each key uh, defines a permutation on the set of NB strings. And then in the ideal cipher model, block cipher E is randomly chosen from all the, uh, the set of all the possible block ciphers. And adversary, an adversary is allowed only for two types of Oracle queries, a forward query and a backward query. And if A makes a forward query with key and the plain text, then it receives uh, its corresponding cipher text. And if A makes query, backward queries, uh, key and uh, cipher text, then it receives uh, corresponding plain text. Uh, now, uh, all the evaluations of a block cipher are not globally determined before an adversary makes queries. Instead, uh, each evaluation of an uh, idea cipher is determined right after an adversary makes a query. This is called the uh, lazy sampling. So here, uh, each key uh, is associated with uh, its domain and range, and both sets are initialized as empty sets. And if a, an adversary makes uh, Next, uh, next, a forward query, then its response is chosen uh, uniformly random from the set of all NB strings. And then, once the evaluation from X to Y is determined, then X and Y are added to both sets, respectively. And if later, an if an adversary makes the second query for the same key, then the uh, output should be chosen uniformly random from the set of OMB strings, but, but we have to exclude previous, previously chosen, previously sampled points, so we exclude this set. And then here Y is chosen uniformly random. In this way, uh, this procedure perfectly simulates a truly random log cipher. And, our, and most security analysis is based on uh, this type of lazy sampling. Now we look at the behavior of an adversary. Uh, adversary A makes uh, uh, adaptive queries to its underlying log cipher. Uh, if and, and the adversary uh, records and keeps a query history. If an adversary makes a forward query and receives its ciphertext, then uh, query response pair x, k, y is recorded its query history. So query response pair is a pair of plain text, key, and the corresponding ciphertext. Uh, the adversary might ask on a backward query. If A make a, makes a backward query with a key and K and Y and obtains X, then here again X, K, X2, K2, and Y2 is recorded. So in this way, if A makes Q query, then query response, query history uh, collects Q query response pairs. So here, we don't care uh, this call response. Uh, we don't care whether this call response, each call response pair is obtained by a forward query or a backward query. Now, the goal of our, now the goal of our collision finding adversary is to obtain a query history such that the query history contains all the query response pairs 
uh, required to compute two colliding evaluations of the of the Nocipher-based hash function. In this case, we say that the adversary has succeeded in finding a collision of H. And, and we want the success probability of finding a collision to be small for every A. Here, uh, in ideal size from model, typically an adversary is uh, assumed to have unbounded computational power and memory. So it's an information theoretic adversary. In this case, we can also assume A is deterministic. So this probability is computed over the randomness of the block cipher. And a uh, collision advantage of Q is defined to be the maximum of adversary collision finding advantage over all the adversaries that make Q calls. And we want this number, this value, to be small. Uh, now I'm going uh, to give a simple example of a security proof in the ideal cipher model. Uh, here I'm going to prove the collision resistance of Davis Mayer compression function uh, defined by this equation, this uh, algorithm. Uh, a nice property of this compression function, this type of single block length compression function, is that a single core response pair each, query, each single corresponding pair uh, determines a unique evaluation of the compression function. So if we are given a uh, corresponding pair x, k, y, then y can be uh, replaced, uh, y can replace this, this value. So we have, uh, we have an evaluation from x1, k1, to x1 plus y. In this way, if an adversary collects q corresponds pairs, then they determine q, eva uh, q evaluations of that. Now, uh, if A uh, finds a collision, then a certain curve will complete, will complete the collision. So let CI be the event, the i-th query completes a collision. Then the occurrence of the event CI means uh, xi plus yi, the output value of the compression function determined by the i-th query, is equal to xj plus yj for some j less than i. If now we compute, now I'm going to compute the probability of this event. If the i's query is fault, then y i should be one of x i plus x j plus y j. So this value is moved to here. This value is moved to here. So x y should be one of x i plus x i is determined when a makes a i's query and. Uh, such for some j, such that kj is equal to ki. So, uh, the number of possible values that give a collision is n plus i minus 1. And by latest sampling yi is chosen uniformly random from the set of, from this set, and the size of this set is at least to the n minus q, because the size of range, range of k is not good. Can you tell me what, what it means for the i curry to be forward? What does it mean? Uh, this one? So you put a bullet, uh, it's, it's saying that the i curry is forward. What does that mean? Uh, actually, uh, a makes the i curry uh, with a bad bad curry or a fault curry. It's a choice of, adversary a choice. So actually, a adversary uh, has a ch ha has freedom to choose uh, to make the ice curly forward or backward. So we have to consider uh, for both cases. Yeah, yeah. So in this case, we uh, assume that a made the made 
uh, photo carry. So here we assume A made, uh, made the photo carry. Uh, here we assume A made the ice carry as a photo carry. In this case, uh, y i should be one of these values. And possible number of uh, possible y values is at most i minus 1. And in this case, uh, and lazy, by lazy sampling, uh, the uh, y i is chosen from uni uniformly random from this set. And the size of this set is at most 2 to the minus q. So the probability of ci is n most i minus 1 over 2 to the n minus q. And for the case where the adversary makes a backward carry, the same argument applies. So both for both cases, we can uh, 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 we, we can obtain this uh, type of upper bound. And the final advantage of A is bounded by summing up all these probabilities uh, over all the i's. And uh, we have uh, this bound. And here we observe that if the number of queries is less than, much less than, to the n over 2, then uh, this collision final adversary would be small. So this QT proof is almost uh, optimal. This proof is optimal when you take, uh, uh, when you take into account the birthday attack. So this gives the birthday bound. And our security proof has two difficulties compared to the simple one I, I, show, I showed you in the previous slide. First, uh, two distinct queries might determine the value evaluation of the MJH compression function. Because MJH compression function makes two calls to the underlying block cipher in order to message an NB message block. And the second difficulty is that the compression function of MJH is not collision resistant. So the collision resistance should be proved only in iteration. First, we look at which pair of queries determine evaluations or valid evaluation of f. Here, f is a non-compressing primitive, 2-bit non-compressing primitive, represented by this dotted box. And then we observe that if we are given two queries of this form, where one plain text is obtained by applying an invol the involution to the other plain text. And then each query space pair can be placed here and can be placed here, giving an evaluation of f from xk, and then x is added to i, x plus y, and sigma x plus y prime, and then theta is multiplied, and then x is added again. So this uh, unique determines this unique evaluation of f. And then these positions can be switched and producing another evaluation of f. In this way, a cycle, uh, this uh, pair, a uh, pair of this form is called a cycle. So here, uh, the point of this slide is that a cycle determines two evaluations of f, non-compressive primitive from 2MB strings. And then, uh, we look at the, this compression function. G. Uh, this compression function, if this compression function is uh, fed to the Merkle Denver transform, then we have the entire MJH hash function. And for a, 
And if we are given a fixed evaluation of f, then from this evaluation, we can generate 2 to the n evaluations of f. Because we can, we have freedom to choose any massive block here, any nb massive block here. And then we can just adjust uh, the values at this place and this place. So each evaluation of f determines 2 to the n evaluations of g. Again, each cycle determines 2 to the n plus 1 evaluations of g. And now we define a direct graph on a set of chain variables. This graph is initially empty, and an edge from u to v is added. Then a pair history determines a valid evaluation from u and m to v for some SGM. So uh, uh, so this type of com computation can be represented by this uh, path. So this point, this node represents uh, its final hash value. If we find uh, collisions of hash function, then we will find a pair of colliding paths in this representation graph. So we like to upper bound the probability of making a colliding paths, a pair of colliding paths in this graph. Now one of our main tools is to modify uh, adversary, modify the original adversary. So, so that the modified adversary records its corresponds pairs in terms of a cycle. So this modified adversary uh, so, uh, uses the original adversary as a subroutine. And then whenever A makes a query, the modified adversary makes one more query. Uh, so that two queries pass pair from the cycle. In this, uh, in this way, the modif if the original adversary makes two queries, then the modified adversary makes at most two Q queries. Now the modified adversary records its corresponds pair <coughs> in terms of cycles. Then it is uh, very easy to analyze uh, this adversary. Then this modified adversary is uh, much easier to analyze than the original one. And you also observe that the collision finding advantage of the original adversary uh, is not greater than the collision finding advantage of the modified adversary. So we have only to prove this colli uh, the collision resistance of MJH against this modified adversary. Now, modified adversary uh, records its core history in terms of cycle, as you can see in this figure. And we note that each cycle uh, generates 2 to the n plus 1 edges in G. So each curve response cycle generates 2 to the n plus 1 edges in G. So this slide shows the evolution of the graph G. Initially, this graph is empty. And then uh, the ad modified adversary uh, makes the first uh, obtains the first corresponding cycle, then 2 to the n plus 1 edges appear in this graph. And if G makes the second query, uh, if, G, uh, if, if the modified adversary obtains the second cycle, then another 2 to the n plus 1, uh, another 2 to the n plus 1 edges appear in this way. 
this graph in both reverse. Uh, here, we see a collision. We see a pair of collision, uh, colliding paths. And this is the last, edge, last collision completing edge. So here we see that the last collision completing edge connects two long chains. And actually we observe that if B uh, succeeds in finding a collision, then B should complete a pair of colliding paths by making uh, one of the eight configurations. Actually, we classified all the possible eight configurations, and we upper bound we we upper bounded the probability of each configuration, and so we have this bound, and we will skip the detailed analysis of each event. Uh, finally, we obtained uh, this parameterized upper bound. So, uh, collision final advantage of the modified adversary is provided by this number, and this number, this value is parameterized by two integers, m1 and m2. By carefully choosing this number, like this, we can, uh, we have an asymptotic result saying, if the number of queries is less than 2 to the 2m over 3, then the collision final advantage is converges to 0 as n goes to infinity. So this asymptotic result is better than MDC2 that provides its collision approval security uh, up to 2 to the 3 and over 5. Numer numerically, uh, if we set the threshold probability to be 1 of 2, then MDC2 provides 75-bit uh, security in terms of collision resistance, while our construction guarantees 8-bit security. Uh, now I'm uh, uh, now we can generalize these configurations. Actually, this is the current uh, research, uh, the my current research. Uh, so we uh, generalize the previous configurations and classify it into simply classify it into three types, and for each configuration is parameterized. Uh, uh, by uh, integer parameter L. And then we use uh, an induction uh, to analyze the probability of each configuration. And we have proof that MJH is collision resistant up to 2 to the L minus 1 N times N over L queries for any N. So if we can take a large L, so this result can be regarded as optimal. <coughs> Now we make conclusion. In our work, in this work, we designed a new double block length hash function for the MJH that provides flexibility to choose the key length of the block cipher, and our construction is efficient, more than efficient than the existing schemes. And our construction also provides proof of security uh, better than MDC2. And our construction. Uh, we believe our construction is suitable for constrained environments such as RFID systems. And as a further research, uh, we have pro we proved optimal collision resistance of MJH up to 2 to the queries. And uh, we believe that uh, we can uh, extend the security proof to the JHH function, which is uh, one of the uh, five final candidates for SHA-3 competition 
because uh, JEH function and MJEH uh, block cipher based compression function have a similar structure. And this is the end of my talk. Thank you.